What's up everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be looking at how we can gain access tokens in case our access tokens are expired using our refresh tokens. If you are to recall from the previous videos, we went ahead and created what is called a token pair. And that token pair has an access token as well as a refresh token. Our access tokens are short-lived and therefore can expire, but our refresh tokens are long-lived and therefore can be used to generate more access tokens. And that's what we're going to be doing in our video. So we can go back to our code right here. And what we have is the class that we created in the previous videos. And this is just one to create or to create a dependency that shall be injected into every path handler that will require an access token to allow us access to resources. So what we're going to be doing is to rewrite this code so that we can create one class that is going to help us create the dependency for those endpoints that we shall need to access with our refresh token. So to begin, what we're going to do is to make sure that this is our base class. So we're going to make this our token bearer, which is going to be the base class. And then access token bearer is just simply going to be a child class or a subclass of that class. So we shall just come right here and say that our access token bearer, it's going to be a child class of our base token bearer class. So this is why we're going to do the checks to check if a valid access token is provided to an endpoint. And then we're going to create another class. So this class is going to be one to check if a valid refresh token is being provided. So these are just going to be the checks for access and refresh tokens. But the rest of the code for checking if a token is valid shall reside within our Dunder call in the parent class. So let's go ahead and implement this. So to begin, what we're going to do is to get that logic for checking if a token is a valid refresh or access token. And if you to recall, it's within this if statement right here that we check if a valid access token has been provided. So in this case, we're going to move this logic to a method inside our access token bearer class. So we're just going to come right here, shall define one method that's going to be called the verify token data method. And this is going to be taking in self as well as the token data. Sorry for this. So this is going to be our token data. Our token data is going to be a dictionary. And then we shall have this being the token data. So this is going to not return anything. So we shall say return none. And therefore, we're just simply going to paste the logic for checking if a valid access token has been provided. So what this code is doing is to just simply check if a refresh token is sent to a token that requires an access token, and then it's going to throw an error in case we provide a refresh token instead of an access token. So to add on to this, we can also check if our token data is not none. So we shall do if token data, and in this case, uh, we are going to go ahead and say and token data refresh, meaning that this is a refresh token. Then we shall raise our exception. We're going to do the same inside our refresh token bearer. So I'm going to rename this class to refresh token bearer, since this is going to be the one to allow us to create a dependency that we shall inject in that endpoint we need to access with a valid refresh token. So what I'm going to do is to just simply copy this function or this method right here. And then I'll paste it inside here. I'll fix the indentation. And once I'll fix the indentation, now we can go ahead and add the checks for a valid refresh token. Now this is going to be the opposite since here, what we're doing is to check if a user is providing an access token. So we shall come right here and say, and not token data refresh, meaning that the refresh claim shall be false. So in this case, we need to remind them to provide a valid refresh token. So we shall change this from provide an access token to provide a refresh token. Once this is done, then we need to go ahead and make sure that these methods are accessed inside our parent class. For us to do that, I'm going to first format my code. And then inside our parent class, we're going to make sure that this method is accessed. So what are you going to do? What we're going to do is to come right in here and define the verify 
So we're going to call this the verify token data, Sim similar to what we have here. So this shall be a method that shall be accessed from the parent class, but these are going to just override it. And this shall take in self as well as our token data, just like we've done in the child classes. But in case they are not implemented, what we shall do is to just simply come right here and say raise. And in this case, we shall raise a not implemented error, meaning that when you fail to override that method, we are going to throw you an error reminding you to do that. So in this case, we shall say, please override. So in this case, it's going to be override this method in child classes. So every time you create child classes of the token bearer class, you'll be required to override this method, which is verify token data. And once we've been able to do that, now we need to go ahead and make use of this method inside our Danda call method right here. So for us to do that, we shall just come right here and say self dot, in this case, that's going to be a verify token data. So we're just going to go ahead and call the verify token data. And now we shall provide that token data. In our case, it's going to be our token data. And this is just enough for us to go ahead and beat two birds with one stone by just making sure we have a base token bearer class to do all the JWT checks and then having these classes to create our dependencies. So now let's go ahead and check if this is working. If I go back to Restworks right here and I try to make this request, we now see that it's working successfully, That, but I need to go to one that requires an access token. So if I go here and try to make a request, it seems like everything is working, nothing has broken yet. If we try to provide a refresh token instead of an access token to get all our books, I'm going to copy our refresh token right here. Once I copy the refresh token, I'm going to provide it as an access token and let's see what is going to happen. So in our case, we see that it's now telling us to provide a valid access token, which is working the way we want. So once we have been able to do that, now let's go ahead and implement the endpoint for allowing us to create new access tokens. So to do that, we're going to go back to our code and inside our routes right here, where I created the auth routes, we're going to make use of our auth service or our auth router to create. So this is going to simply be a post request. Actually, let's just make it, can we call it a post or a get request? Let's just say this is going to be a, let's say this is going to be a get request. And this get request is going to be on the slash refresh token endpoint. So in this case, we shall just say refresh token. And once we have this defined, we shall define the handler, which is going to be a sync dev. In our case, we shall call this a refresh token or a new session or whatever you want to call it. So we shall say refresh token or let's just call it get new access token. So once you've been able to do that, now we're simply going to come right in here and use our refresh token bearer dependency. So we're going to have to import it at the top right here. So shall just come and say from dot dependencies, we're going to go ahead and import our refresh token bearer. And once we've imported our refresh token bearer, now we're going to create a dependency by simply coming here and saying, so we're going to do the same thing like we did, but I think I'm mistaken. This is supposed to be token details instead of user details because it's returning everything about the token. So I'll just call this token details. And in our case, we are simply going to have this being the token details. So this shall be a dictionary and it shall be a dependency but that dependence is going to be an object of the refresh token bearer class. So we're just simply going to come and do that. Once that is done, now we need to go ahead and provide an access token in case our refresh token is valid. Now to do that, what you're simply going to do is to first of all, check if the user details. So for now, I'll just actually say 
return an empty dictionary. So let's just try to make a request to this endpoint. If you go back to our rest folks right here, I'll create a new request and we're going to say this is going to be for refresh tokens. And we're going to make a request to our endpoint. So our endpoint is going to be found on the slash refresh token route or path. I sent, we now see not authenticated, therefore require a token. So I'm going to go to our headers right here. Let us test our functionality. So I'm going to create one for authorization. And then we are going to come right here and say bearer. And then we shall provide our access token or our refresh token. So I'm going to go back where we created and try to provide an access token to see if our checks will pass. So I'll copy this and then I'm going to close some of the things we have here. So I'll just come and paste in our access token. And now we see that it's working. We are required to provide a refresh token. Now I'm going to go back to where we created our token pair. And then I'll try to provide a valid refresh token. If I copy, we are going to come right here and then provide our refresh token and send, we now see that it actually passes. So we can, for now, uh, we can now just return a successful response in case we provide a valid refresh token. All right, so now let's get coding and let's make this work so that we generate a new access token. So since we now have our user details or our token details, if we want to access the expiry of a token, what we're going to do to just come right here and say the expiry, date is going to be equal to so in this case we shall get that timestamp which is going to be token details and in this case we shall get our exp claim once we've got our exp claim now keep in mind that this is going to be a timestamp so the timestamp is going to be different from a daytime object in fact if we go ahead and print it out we shall say expiry and actually let's just call this the expiry timestamp, not the expiry date. So I'm just going to rename this so that we can be so clear. This is going to be our timestamp. And what I'm going to do is to print this out. So if I go back here and try to make this request, if we go within our terminal, we shall notice that our timestamp is going to be printed in this. So you need to convert it to a date time. And we're going to be looking at how we can do that so what we're going to do is to check if our token is expired and if it's not expired then we shall just create a new access token with the user details that are found within our token so to do that we shall just come right here and say if our expiry timestamp or we're going to make use of that date time class so we need to go ahead and import that at the top so in this case we shall say import date time once you've been able to do that, we shall say if date time dot from timestamps, in this case, we need to get this from a timestamp, then we shall provide our expiry timestamp. So this is going to convert our timestamp into a date time object. So if this date time is greater than the date time dot now, meaning the current date and the current time, then we shall create a new access token. So we shall say that our new access token, our new access token in this case is going to be equal to uh, a call to our create access token. But in this case, our user data is going to be the same user data we shall get from our token details. So in this case, we shall say token details and our token details, in this case, we shall get the user claim that we set. If we go ahead and log that, then it's going to log the user details or the UID of the user as well as the email. So once we've been able to do this, now we shall just return a successful message. So we shall say return, and in this case, we shall return a JSON response. That JSON response is going to have the content being a dictionary. This dictionary is going to have our new access token. And then uh, that will be our new access token. In case it doesn't return that, then we shall throw the error. So let's just return an error or raise an error. So we shall just come right here and say raise HTTP exception. And in this case, our status code 
is going to be something like let's say 400 or let's just say status dot http 400 or let's say uh, let's just say that this is going to be something like invalid credentials or something or logout not successful or this is actually going to be refreshing our token so we're going to say something like the detail being equal to invalid or expired token so this is going to be our refresh token anyway let's just say expired token so i'm going to format this and make this a little bit smaller so this is the code that we have we get our refresh token after checking if our refresh token is not yet expired then we shall go ahead and return our access token else we shall raise an exception so if we go back to our rest folks right here and we try to make the request we shall now see that our new access token has been created once we've received uh the right refresh token in this case and in case we used an access token to generate a new access token of course we're going to see that it's not going to work because we require a refresh token so i'm going to provide our access token right here or our refresh token and then i think i missed something this is supposed to be e then blah 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 and I think I missed that first character or the first letter. Yes, I missed it. So I'll have to provide it right here. When I send, we now see that we are required to provide a valid refresh token. In this video, we we'll look at how we can generate new tokens or renew a user session using a refresh token. If you've enjoyed this video, I request you please leave a like. It helps these videos get into the algorithm. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video in the series. Bye.